In a time when some brands are axing sedans from their lineups entirely, Toyota is doubling down. They took two models that have historically been geared toward older folks and reinvented them with new dynamic styling and a surprising amount of sportiness. Now as most of you know, these models share a lot of componentry and overlap a lot in price. So for this comparison, we will take two closely priced models and see which one has the better bang for the buck. With that said, let's go ahead and get to it. So like I just mentioned, these two overlap on price quite a bit. The Avalon's base price for an XLE is now $35,500, but for this comparison we chose the fully loaded Touring, which starts at $42,200. From there we have the advanced safety package, optional paint, destination charge, and a handful of other small things, to bring the total to $45,407. The base ES350 starts out exactly $4,000 higher than the XLE Avalon. However, on the top end, it can be equipped to be about $10,000 more than a loaded Avalon. Therefore, to keep things close on the pricing front, we chose an ES350 Premium, but with a long list of options. Some of those are blind spot monitoring, upgraded wheels, the navigation package, premium equipment group, and upgraded wood. After adding in a few other odds and ends, plus destination, the total is a touch over $47,000. So that makes our Lexus about $1,400 more expensive, which is ultimately pretty insignificant on luxury vehicles. Anyways, now that we've established the bases, let's get into the comparison. So starting out with getting into the cars, both vehicles feature nice looking redesigned key fobs. The Avalon's is piano black with dedicated branding. However, the ES's is even nicer with real metal trim along the side. Let's go ahead and get started by checking them out under the hood. In the engine bay, the two are essentially identical. Both buck the trend of turbocharging and go with 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engines, making 301 horsepower in the Toyota and 302 in the Lexus. Torque for both is 267 pound feet. The engine is paired with an 8 speed automatic transmission, and interestingly, both are front wheel drive only. As far as driving dynamics go, they are similar to each other in ride characteristics, but in the steering and engine note there is a divergence. You can definitely tell that the ES is the one geared more toward luxury, including the F-Sport which I've also ridden in, while the Avalon now has a surprisingly sporty demeanor. All you have to do is listen to that amplified exhaust note to tell the difference in mission. However, which one is better really just comes down to your personal preference. Lastly, even though they share powertrains, the fuel economy is slightly better for the ES, but not in a significant enough way to get a point. Now that that stuff is out of the way, let's move on to the all new exterior styling and features. Like I mentioned at the top, both models have undergone aggressive redesigns in an attempt to appeal to younger buyers still interested in sedans. Now for Lexus, the spindle grille has been a point of contention since it was introduced years ago. And for ES duty, indeed it is very large and bold. The overall look is very similar to the flagship LS, with bars that make a webbed pattern. Somehow though, Toyota has managed to outdo the Lexus in boldness with a front end that is almost entirely grilled. 
This is probably the largest grill I've ever seen applied to a sedan. And to make it even crazier, it's finished in a contrasting black mesh. In the one area left over, we have the extremely premium looking headlights, which are LED for all the elements and even have dynamic turn signals. The ES's lights are also LED, but the turn signal is halogen and the overall look is plainer unless you get the $1500 triple beam headlights. Neither cars have any room left over for the fog lights. So overall, both are designs you'll either love or hate so the Avalon will take the point for having the nicer lights. Checking out the side and back, they become more similar, with long and low designs that look really pleasing to the eye. Both have slim and 3D looking taillights, as well as large integrated exhaust tips. The Avalon also adds some black accents, but overall there's not a whole lot to objectively separate them. For the wheels, both have nice designs, but the Avalons are an inch bigger and look more elaborate. Coming up to the mirrors, both products have heating and blind spot monitors, though only the Lexus has auto dimming. And as far as other safety systems besides BSM, both vehicles include the full suite of safety systems standard, but the ES has version 2.0 with a few additional features. That means in addition to all the usual stuff, it has more advanced adaptive cruise control that works all the way to a stop, bicyclist and low light pedestrian detection, a system that reads road signs, and lane tracing assist that keeps you centered in the lane. The Avalon may eventually add these features, but it doesn't have them right now. Additionally, it is also worth mentioning that the Lexus has the longer basic and powertrain warranty coverage, though they both have free maintenance for two years. Finishing things off on the outside, the Avalon has a 15.8 gallon fuel tank and the ES has a 15.9 gallon tank. That puts the fuel ranges at 395 miles and 413 for the Toyota and Lexus respectively, both on regular fuel. Well with that we wrap up everything on the outside, so now let's see if the brand new interiors are as closely matched. So at first glance inside the cabins, you can immediately tell that any similarities that existed on the outside do not carry over to the interiors. The ES has a more traditional, rich, and classy appearance, while the Avalon goes for a more modern, geometric look. It is finished in gray with real aluminum accents, and the ES in black with linear espresso wood trim. In regards to the seats, this ES has a full synthetic leather called Nulux, and the Avalon has a suede material in the middle and a faux leather on the outside edges. Both seats are heated and ventilated, though interestingly, the Avalons have two more ways of adjustment at 12 ways versus 10 ways on the ES. So getting on the inside, it's hard to complain about the interior materials on both, but as you would expect, the Lexus does have a higher level of craftsmanship. On the Toyota, we have soft touch materials across all the upper parts, and then through the middle, there is extensive use of this lovely looking real aluminum. Below that, we have some leather trim that also goes down by the cup holders, and even the side part of the console is also leather wrapped. For the Lexus, you have leather trim above the gauges, and all the other parts are soft touch plastic or genuine wood. In the middle, there is real polished aluminum trim, and like the Avalon, you have padding where your knees might touch. The bigger difference though comes at the door trims. It's hard to capture, but the Lexus just has more solidity and refinement to the parts, so overall, it'll take the material's point. It's a small thing, but I love the metal start button on the ES. Once the systems boot up, you'll see an 8 inch display on the Avalon and a 12.3 inch display on the Lexus.
Moving over here to the gauges, they both have center displays. The Avalon's a large traditional display, and the ES is a fancier full digital tack and speedo with a helper display. However, our Avalon has a 10 inch head up display that would cost at least an additional 500 bucks to get on the ES. Coming back to the steering wheels, both are leather wrapped, heated, and power adjusting, though the Lexus has much nicer leather, wood, and aluminum. Now switching gears into storage, the Avalon gets more utility out of the same amount of space. Starting out, the center console is slightly bigger in the Toyota, but the bigger deal is this area up in the front. Not only can you put something on top, but underneath there is a hidden bin with a wireless phone charger that the Lexus doesn't have. The ES's remote touchpad takes up a lot of space on its console, so the Avalon is overall more versatile. Coming back to the shifters, both have traditional ones, as well as paddle shifters. When in reverse though, they separate. While the ES can also get a 360 degree bird's eye camera, only the Avalon has one at this price point. That stands out, especially given how it only takes up part of the 12 inch display. Finally, they both do have automatic parking brakes, brake hold, and several drive modes. One of the most important features ergonomically are the climate controls, and neither of these will confuse you. They are two-zone automatic and have controls explicitly laid out here with physical buttons. And now that brings us to the audio systems, so let's hear them back to back. It's honestly hard to tell since these audio samples were recorded with different mics, but the Avalon's upgraded system is simply better than the base Lexus setup that you get at this price. But one of the biggest differences in the cabins are in the infotainment systems. Not in the way they look or the features, but in the controls. Both systems have the newly updated dynamic navigation system, Wi-Fi hotspots, an app suite, and Apple CarPlay but things swing in the Avalon's favor due to it being a touch screen and having handy shortcuts around the screen. Whom shall I in contrast to that, Lexus uses a touch pad, which is better than the previous joystick, but still quite difficult to operate with accuracy. I do love the extra space on the screen and the ability to have a second helper display, but I think most people would gladly trade the space for simpler day-to-day -day operation. Wrapping up the interiors, we have auto dimming mirrors and single panel moonroofs. Overall, both have very well executed cabins with stylish designs and plenty of space. Moving to the rear, of course, as you would expect for vehicles that share platforms, rear seat space is basically identical and both are leaders in their respective classes. Moving on to rear amenities, something surprising happens. The Avalon actually has heated rear seats, which is something not available at all on the ES, no matter how much you spend. Otherwise, both have vents and places to charge your phones. Around back, predictably, the same thing plays out as the rear space. The ES does technically have 4% more space at 16.9 cubic feet versus 16.1 cubic feet, but that's cancelled out by the fact that the seats fold 60-40 split on the Avalon, whereas the ES only has a pass-through. Well that pretty much wraps up this very close comparison video between two relatives. At $45,000, the Avalon comes out on top, but undoubtedly, if you spend more, then the ES is going to be your better choice, with semi-aniline leather, open-pore wood, pano moonroof, and more refinement. 
As always, thanks for joining us on this car confections comparison. And be sure to subscribe for more comparisons and our signature full review videos. Take care.